For a while now, I've come across many people who enjoy creepy stories and monster legends and folklore and the like. But when I mention an SCP, they stare at me blankly. This is a shame because the SCP universe is extremely rich in fascinatingly creepy content. I mean, when I first came across an SCP, it instantly hooked me and I was basically stuck researching and reading about them all for days. But honestly, the thing that probably got my attention the most was just the very, very, very um, interesting way in which the stories are written. They're usually from a first person perspective and incredibly unique. And it's really the objective all business way in which they're portrayed that make them frightening. If you read them enough, in the back of your mind, you can even fool yourself into believing that the SCP organization is real. It all revolves around the SCP Foundation, an often morally gray, worldwide group dedicated to protecting humanity from supernatural threats. Their goal is to secure, catalog, and if possible, destroy or contain paranormal creatures, objects, or places that are dangerous and beyond the comprehension of ordinary people. It's very important in the SCP universe that the knowledge of all these anomalous things are hidden from the public. SCP stands for Secure, Contain, Protect. So they're kind of the good guys, though to say they believe the ends justify the means would be an understatement concerning their philosophy about how they conduct their business. SCP is also described as Special Containment Procedures. There's many different types of personnel in the organization, ranging from scientists to administrators to the notorious D-Class. D-Class are made up of criminals, people who have special abilities, engineers, construction workers, mercenaries, paid soldiers. If there's a job, there's a D-Class for that. D-Class are considered 100% expendable and there are high casualties for them. Constantly. But despite the horrific nature of being a D-Class, the organization could not exist without their sacrifice. And humanity would have no shield against supernatural threats. But the D-Class are not the only ones in danger, so was basically every single person in the organization. With a lot of the creatures being esoteric in nature or cosmic horrors that cause madness no matter what you do, or how well you think you're defended from them, or how well that SCP is contained. And since it's a multiverse, there's actually different histories and origins of the Foundation, with one of them having the Foundation evolve from the American Secure Containment Initiative, which was around during the Civil War time period. And then there's others that take the organization back all the way to ancient Greece or even beyond. Though basically all the canon is shared, there is no official canon. So that leaves a lot of room for the writers to be creative in their horror stories, which means that much like the H.P. Lovecraft universe, your own headcanon overrides all other canon. Though despite that open canon, there's solid rules that SCPs have to follow based off of their individual stories, such as SCP-087, also known as the Stairwell which is a dark staircase that appears to go on forever, and the descent is always in shadow with the D-Class personnel unable to see what's going on very far ahead of them, even with the brightest lights. And within this eternal staircase resides SCP-087, a paranormal creature without a mouth, pupils, or nostrils, and is never fully visible. Its unnerving face is the only noticeable thing in the shadows. And when it's present, it emanates a distressed sound like a crying child. And as one descends the stairs, the entity seems to descend along with them. The SCP Foundation has facilities all over the world. And anywhere that has an anomalous property that cannot be moved has an SCP facility literally built right on top of it. These buildings are always completely kept secret and hidden from the public. But not only the public, this also includes governments and, I guess, any organization outside of the SCP Foundation all over the world. Though there may be SCP personnel in governments, there's never any governments that have personnel inside the SCP Foundation or even really have any influence in its affairs. But the Foundation has its fingers in basically everything, including corporations, law enforcement, you name it. 
There's a, basically, for the most part, a foundation operative everywhere. Which means that nothing weird can go down without them knowing about it. The foundation is beyond government, law, and any oversight whatsoever other than the organization itself. As such, many SCP facilities or containment structures are built to trick any onlooker from thinking that there's anything abnormal about it. The Foundation's facilities themselves are disguised as typical everyday structures and rarely if ever questioned by the public or anyone else for that matter. The way that the SCP Foundation catalogs its anomalous discoveries varies depending on the threat or the nature of the SCP, including the procedures to keep it contained. The first class is the safe class, which means the SCP is very much understood and any danger it may pose is under control of the Foundation, or the SCP poses no real threat in any way whatsoever. Many times containing a safe SCP is as hard as putting it in a box or locking it in a room. Entities under this designation can be openly investigated face to face or even casually inspected by personnel. The second class is the Euclid class, which means the SCP is dangerous, not fully understood, or not easy to contain. The Euclid class is the most common type of SCP and poses a genuine danger. They often need active supervision, have an ever-changing way to contain them that continually has to be kept up with, or they have an ever-present ability to escape containment. This type of SCP is under heavy guard with a vault-like way of imprisoning it. D-Class personnel suffers casualties to Euclid-Class SCPs regularly, and these things are often the stuff of nightmares. The third class of SCP is the Keter class, which means that the SCP is very, very, very dangerous and able to cause destruction on a massive level. Though oddly enough, not all Keter class SCP are actually hazardous in an ever-present manner. Some may be thought of to pose extreme danger just because of their ineffable nature, but have never really been proven to do so. In any case, the organization takes a better safe than sorry approach and these SCP are given a lot of research funds. Keter class SCP usually require overly complex and elaborate procedures to contain them, and if they ever escape, could destroy entire cities or even worse, the world. Keter class SCPs are incredibly serious and horrifying that the Foundation will spare no expense in lives or material resources to contain them. That is, if the SCP can be contained at all. Then there's the Thamiel class SCP, which is actually beneficial to the SCP Foundation and helps them in their cause in one way or another. The fifth class of SCP is Explained, and means that the SCP has been logically explained by conventional science. Then there's an Apollyon class SCP, that is the rarest of the rare and entirely beyond the Foundation's ability to control, contain, or even influence in any way. If this type of SCP ever posed a threat to humanity, there would be no fighting it, only extinction. And then there's the esoteric class, and there's a bunch of other classes that are in a mixture of different canons, but the final type of SCP class I'll talk about is neutralized, which, as I'm sure you can guess, means that the SCP has been destroyed or ceased any anomalous danger or behavior. Though if a neutralized class SCP is uh, not destroyed and just has stopped doing weird stuff, it is still constantly under review and observation by the organization, just in case its paranormal nature pops back up. The SCP Foundation exists in a multiverse of cosmic horrors, interdimensional threats, and paranormal entities so creepy and horrifying, they cause madness and destruction on a level ordinary humans can't even comprehend. But despite all of the nightmarish cases the Foundation conducts regularly, it's on the front line of the battle for human existence in a world seemingly hell-bent on humankind's annihilation. The Foundation's mission statement is as follows. While the rest of mankind dwells in the light, we must stand in the darkness to fight it, contain it, and shield it from the eyes of the public, so that others may live in a sane and normal world.